Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Aristocrat Soccer Podcast. Your host, Jay Keegan, here. This week, we're doing a little something different. We're doing a segment called Into the Archives, where we watch clips from old games that I've played throughout my career. Um, I would encourage everyone to head over to YouTube for this, just because it's going to have video. It's probably going to be better to watch on there. But if you don't uh, want to go to YouTube, then we're still going to post it on all the podcast um, sites, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So for the first game that we're going to watch, um, just they're in stat, post these videos, which are it's all the actions from each player. For every player throughout the world, pretty much every professional player has an opportunity to go on in stat. And after the game, there'll be eight to 10 minute clips of every time you pass the ball, every time you shot the ball, cross the ball, any aerial challenges, um, things like that. Um, and they post it for every game, which is awesome. It's a great learning tool as a player because you're able to see everything in a short space of time where you don't have to sit through 90 minutes and uh, see all the other things that go on in the game. You can just kind of focus on yourself and how to improve yourself. Um, so the first game that we're going to go into for my career um, is a game from back in 2015 with Galway United. Um, it was the EA Sports Cup final, which would be the, for people that know England a little bit better, it would be the equivalent of like a League Cup. Uh, used to be the Carling Cup final. Um, it's not the main cup. It's not the FA Cup, but it's still a very important cup. And at Galway United, we were kind of um, towards the bottom of the top division. We, did, we avoided relegation, relegation that season in 2015, but this EA Sports Cup, run was a huge thing for us. Um, the game, the final was played at home uh, in front of a huge crowd, sellout crowd, almost 5,000 people. And we played against St. Patrick Athletic, who had won the league two seasons before. They won the main cup the year before that. And they were a much bigger club. They were, they were bigger. They were, uh, had a lot more success during that season, 2015. I believe they finished fourth or fifth. Maybe they, they got into Europe. Uh, so it was a big game and, and it was our opportunity to win something. And the club hadn't won a trophy since 1996, I believe. And they hadn't, they had that, and at that point that was 19 years. And it's still, um, as you'll find out, it's that streak is still alive today. Um, but yeah, this, this was a, such a big moment in my career because my first cup final uh, the season before that. With Galway, we were in the second division and we had a promotion final, promotion playoff final, um, which was another big occasion also at home um, where we got promoted from the second division to the first. Um, so that was, I mean, that was a big game as well in my career. There, we were not, we're not, there was no in stat for that particular game. So we can't, we can't watch that. Um, but just kind of sit back, relax. What I'm going to do is for the YouTube viewers, um, you can watch the video and I'm going to kind of talk about it as we go through it. Uh, just so you know, just a background before this in the EA sports cup, we beat uh, Finn Harps in the first round. We beat the Mayo league in the second round in the quarterfinals. We beat Bohemians one, nothing in extra time. And then in the semifinal uh, to get, to make it to the final against St. Patrick's athletic, we drew zero, zero. And then we won on penalties and Dundalk at that time were the best club in the league. They were winning leagues, they were winning cups and it was, it was a big upset to set up this grand stage. So I'm going to play the video and you guys will be watching it as I am. Um, we'll kind of talk about it. So as you can see, it's, it's a, it's a tight little stadium in, in Galway. It was, it was, it was a great place to play because in Ireland, the, the supporters are so close uh, to the pitch, which definitely creates a great atmosphere. Whereas a lot of times in the U.S., I find uh, the, the field is so it's so far away. It's like high school football field sometimes where the crowd is just so far away. And it, it's, it's tough to create uh, the same atmosphere. As you see there, I just had my first chance of the game. Good throw in there from our left back, Mark Ludden. Uh, we set up this game in a 4-4-2. Uh, I was playing up front with Enda Curran, who was a great finisher. We both finished tied for third in the in the league that year, which is impressive considering we finished in 10th place. We both had 12 league goals on the season. Uh, we were playing a 4-4-2 with a Paul Sino, who just touched the ball there, and Ryan Connolly was the number 10. Uh, the funny part about this, uh, this particular game, Obviously, I didn't know it at the time, but three seasons later, I would end up playing for St. Patrick's Athletic. And I think there was at least four or five, maybe more guys that had played this night that I ended up um, being teammates with. 
So there's some good link play there between myself and Ryan Connolly, and um, the ball just goes out of play. Uh, one thing that I always try to improve in my game, and it's it's something that I've been working on my entire career, is you can see a lot of these. The ball is getting clipped in from the center back. Uh, and as a smaller striker, it's, it is difficult for me to hold the ball consistently and, and win flick-ons and things like that. But it's something that I think is vitally important because it, it helps your team so much to, to gain territory. And when the striker can hold the ball up well, uh, it, it allows the rest of the team to get up the field and hopefully create more chances. It's a great ball around the corner there from Ryan Connolly. Good hold up play. We were very dangerous this season, especially on the counter. Um, we had players like a Gary Shanahan on the right wing, Jay Malloy, who played on the left wing um, on, in this particular game. Guys that had pace, I had pace myself. Um, we could get up and down and, and, and create problems. I think we, we struggled more so when teams would sit in on us and we weren't able to break them down quite as well as maybe we should have been able to. There's Sam Oji right there. He's a big center back for us. He was very good towards the end of the season. He had a long career in England and in Ireland. I love playing with Mark Ludden. He was so good at playing balls like that. And it's, it's such a big thing for defenders where they can play balls that, as a striker, I feel like I can control. See, the ball the, the ball that he played there was, it was on the ground. It wasn't bobbling. It was easy for me to just lay off to, to, to Ryan Connolly there. And, and a lot of times, center backs and, and full backs, they don't um, quite pay enough, at least for my liking, quite pay enough attention to the way to pass and helping their striker control it. Here's Killian Cantwell on the ball, our center back. He's a young, he was a young, good player that season for us. We had we had definitely had some moments in this game where we played some good stuff. Uh, I, I do think at, at times maybe the occasion got to us a little bit, um, in, from a sense of we want to play a little too conservatively and too direct. But at the same time, when, when I look back at the results that season against St. Pat's, there's another chance for me there. Tough header, but when I look back at our time. Throughout the season, we the first time we played St. Pat's, they beat us 4-1 in the league. The second time, they beat us 3-1. And then the last time, they beat us 1-0. So I do think it may have been the right strategy to play maybe a little bit more conservatively. Uh, I don't think Tommy Dunn, our, our manager, set us up to play conservative at all. We played two up front, which is obviously not conservative in the least. Uh, but I think as players, sometimes when the occasion, you don't want to be the guy to make the mistake, and that can affect how your team plays. Yeah, I'm on the ball here, holding up again. Colin Horgan, who just played that ball in there, who's a right back. Uh, he was probably one of the better professionals that I played with during my time in Ireland. Always doing the right things in the gym, looking after his body. I really enjoyed playing with him. What a ball there from Mark Ludden and Curran. We had a few chances to win this game for sure. Uh, it's, it, it, when you watch back these videos and when you watch back the full game or even this short clip, you think, oh, what if? Because when you, when you play for a club that hasn't won anything in so long and the supporters are so committed and, and, they, and they show you so much support, you just want to kind of give back and you want to be able to say when they talk about the club they want to be like yeah that team back in 2015 they achieved this great thing for us but we just, unfortunately as, as you'll see we just weren't quite able to get over the line but still getting to a cup final was a good good accomplishment see there's an example there of, I just I should hold up the ball a little bit better but it works out for us Good interplay there. It's good stuff. Stephen Walsh, who was a big player for us, came on later in this game. Uh, up front, he was on the ball just then. See, there's another one. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, when I look back on this game, it's it's those moments. It's the it's, it's. I mean, obviously you miss chances and stuff, but it's those moments where I think I should, could have held the ball up a little bit better. Um, 
I mean, I mean, there's an example of great hold up play, but it, it's, it's a, for, for my liking, it's a little bit too inconsistent. It's something that I've, I've tried to work on. I mean, this is now six years ago. So it, it's, it's, it's as a player, you just have to, you have to kind of think like, what, what are your weaknesses? And how are you going to improve on them? And you don't want to focus too much on your only your weaknesses because you want your strengths to still carry you through. Because in a lot of cases, that's what people, when coaches sign players, they're signing them based on their strengths. They're not necessarily signing them based on, oh, he can't do this, he can't do that. They look, okay, I see he can strike a ball really well. I think, or I can win, he can win aerial battles, whatever the case may be. And he, and he says to himself, I can use those traits and we can work around the weaknesses. So I wouldn't say to focus too much on improving your weaknesses, but it, it definitely is always something on my mind for sure. Kerry Shanahan was like a was like a roadrunner out there. He was so quick. Oh, that's a great block there. It's going on goal. It's it's six years later. It's still kind of tough to watch. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's. It, it, the thing about Ireland is it's such a fast-paced, frantic game, which I love to play, and I think it suits my game perfectly because I, I think I, I'm not always clean with certain touches, but I'm, I'm relentless. I have a good work rate, and I'm really fit. So here's Stephen Walsh on the ball. Um, so it really benefits my game to have a lot of opportunities, whereas sometimes in other leagues that I played in, it just can turn into like almost like a half-court basketball type game, especially when it's when it's when the weather is is very hot because the, the tempo of the game slows down. Whereas in Ireland, the weather is always at most 60, 65. It's raining a lot of the time. So you kind of have that energy to play uh, at a frenetic pace for, for 90 minutes. Here, we're kind of getting now towards the 80th minute. We have on our minds, we're thinking it's nil nil. And I don't think at this moment we're playing for penalties or extra time or anything like that. I think you, I mean, you saw the chances we had just prior to this. I think in the second half, we really started to pick up our game between maybe the 50th and the 80th minute. We had three or four chances and you won't see all of them because I wasn't necessarily directly involved in them, but three or four chances where it's like, ah, oh, if we just, I mean, Paul Sino had a brilliant strike that was cleared off the line by the defender. And you just think this is the period of the game where if you can get a goal, it would really have changed things. That's a great ball forward. Can Shanahan make it? Does he have the pen? That's a good one over the top. Kenny Brown with the uh, header away. Nice back right there. Carl and James Chambers. So in the in the extra time of this game, I moved out wide. Shootouts in a row go their way in this competition. Quarterfinal victory over. Became more of a winger as opposed to a center forward. Stephen Walsh came on. And. Jamie McGrath coming in at the end of the 90 minutes in place of Killian Brennan. On the ball right there is Conan Byrne. He's a League of Ireland legend. He scored over 100 goals, 500 appearances for St. Pat's. Great experience for him. Ryan Connolly, who just played the ball right there, he's probably one of my favorite players that I've played with. He was just always looking for a forward pass, center midfielder, always looking for a forward pass. and. Always oh, just working so hard for the team. There's the Galway supporters right there. As we get into later into extra time, it's the legs are getting heavy. Not, I mean, not not gonna lie to you, it's, you you're, you're covering a lot of ground and. And it becomes more of a battle of the mind as opposed to the body because both teams are tired and you just have to kind of make decisions. Like, like in this particular instance, I think maybe if I'm fresher in the game, maybe I can go by Kenny Brown there, the center back. But you just have to make decisions that are that are they can they're the right decision playing wise, but they also can help kind of save your energy a bit where it becomes. Um, you're almost pacing yourself to an extent um, without letting your level of play drop because you know like you don't want to cramp up you don't want um, to let the team down by not being able to track back uh, so so it's in your mind for sure um, but the best players the guys who have won leagues and have won cups they know how to in these last moments of the game how to make the right decisions and and come out on top 
this for me is uh, I'm out I'm out on wide, and we're just I think we're playing for extra time at this point. We're St. Pat's in the extra time. In fairness to them, they they were on top of us. They were the more likely to score. This was scary. Last minute of the game, 120th minute, and here uh, it goes to penalties, and unfortunately, that's the result of mine. It's definitely a a tough moment in my career as we pan out of the video. Um, we finished obviously 0-0 and then it went to penalties and they scored first Then Ryan Connolly scored for us and then they scored again. And then I was the the second penalty for Galway and it's a good, I mean, it's a good save. Obviously it's, it's sometimes the keeper guesses, right? I, I think I could have put it a little bit lower. Maybe it was got a pretty good height for him to save. Uh, but I, when I take penalties, I normally just I pick a spot beforehand and, and I go with it. I, I think a lot of players are maybe a little bit better at, than me at it in terms of reacting at the last minute on their run-up. If you think of like a, a Bruno Fernandez or Jorginho, guys like that who they almost – they don't decide until the last second. Uh, I've always been a player that makes up their mind, and a lot of times it works, but sometimes it doesn't uh, in that particular moment. Clearly it didn't. Um, after this, St. Pat scored their third – um, we scored our, our third, so it was three, two, and then it went to four, three, both teams scored again. And then St. Pat's had a chance to win it with their fifth kick. And it was saved by Connor Wynn, who was our keeper who had an, uh, in fairness and we didn't discuss him, but he had an unbelievable game to keep it zero, zero. He made a couple great saves. Connor O'Malley for St. Pat's was excellent as well, making a couple good saves. And we had a chance to tie it up at four. Uh, to go into kind of sudden death penalties and Annie O'Connell missed for us. And that obviously gave St. Pat's the cup, but I mean, it's, it was the first cup, cup final in my career. It was definitely a great, great experience to get there and to play in such a big occasion. But I think when you look back on your career, you're definitely going to have regrets and moments that you wish would have gone differently. And this is definitely probably number one on the list. And it's, it's 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 an upsetting moment but it was also a great learning moment uh, for me and, and i think i've used it now throughout my career and we've had success with greenville this past two years and i think i've kind of learned how to in certain situations maybe make better decisions to help win win big games and, and i mean that's all you really you can do you gain experience through these moments when, when you can't let it happen is it just kill you and just kill your career and you're so down and upset and and you just can't function, you lose confidence, and, and you just don't want that. Uh, and I think it happened a little bit to me. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm human, but I, I, I tried the best I could to, to move on from this as quickly as possible. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this kind of uh, into the archives. Instat is a great tool for us players to use, and, and it can be a fun tool for, for fans as well if they want to track their favorite players and, and just see the, their actions and not see anything else throughout the game. Uh, but if, if there's a great response to this uh, particular episode, we're gonna, definitely going to do more. I'm obviously, I've had a long career, and we could I may do one from every season uh, if, if people are into it. Uh, there's, there's a lot of games. I'm, I have access to however many games I could play, maybe over 200 games on Instat are just exactly like this, all my actions throughout the match. This particular one was about 12 minutes because it was extra time and, and penalties. But uh, Thank you so much for, for viewing. If you have any thoughts about this particular episode, how to make it better, how to, how to kind of maybe engage, if you had any thoughts on my personal performance, how I could have been better, any, any critiques or, or positive input as well, that'd be great. Um, and if, if, uh, if anybody, Oh, of course I forgot. Uh, if you have listened to the end of this, please like, um, this video on YouTube, give us a rating on Apple podcasts. And of course, uh, subscribe on YouTube as well. It, it, and it really helps, uh, the podcast grow and, and feedback is always important because you never really know what people like, what they don't like. So please do that. Uh, but until next time I'm the athlete and we are the aristocrats. <laughs>